Gasoline engines suck. They're horrible, and I love them. Now, are they horrible because they put out a lot of CO2 and smoke which are both harmful to the environment? Yes, but that's not what I mean. What I mean is, gasoline engines are horrible engines. I'm talking specifically about the four-stroke engine that is present in almost any car that runs with gasoline. They are called four-stroke engines because, well, they run on a cycle of four strokes. One to pull air and fuel in, another to compress the mixture, the power stroke that results from igniting the gasoline in air, and finally the exhaust stroke to empty out the cylinder. We have four strokes and only one of them is used to power the engine? That's not good. Especially because the Wankel engine and the two-stroke engines do better than that. But wait a second, because it gets worse. Gasoline is actually a great fuel. It stays liquid at room temperature, unlike propane, butane and hydrogen. It's easy to mix with air and it has an energy density 100 times greater than lithium-ion batteries. Which means that 100 kilograms of lithium-ion batteries have the same energy storage as 1 kilogram of gasoline. Gasoline is great for energy storage, but unfortunately we put it into this disgusting engine with a thermal efficiency of 25%, which means only a quarter of the energy is actually used to move the car. The rest is turned into heat. Like, a lot of heat. 75% of heat. You call this an engine? Well, I call it a furnace. It's better to cook pizzas than to move a car. It's a waste of strokes, a waste of energy, makes too much noise, and... I love it. I said a lot of bad things about the four strokey. But the truth is, this engine is used in almost every single gasoline car for a reason. It delivers a good balance of power, reliability and efficiency. It's also easier to cool, seal and lubricate. As for my reason of loving it, well, I could tell you I love this engine because it brings order into this chaotic universe by releasing the trapped energy stored in the form of dead decomposed dinosaurs over millions of years. But that would be a lie. I just find them fascinating. I love to see them working. The problem is, I can't really see them working, can I? Not the best beats anyway, I mean the explosions and the strokes and all that stuff. Engines are normally made out of metal, and metal tends to be opaque. The only real way for me to see the cycle is through my own crappy animations. Now, to be fair, there's some cool videos out there of people building engines that are transparent at the top. And there's also a very cool video from Smarter Every Day, where Destin made a transparent carburetor. But I've never seen an engine with a transparent cylinder, so if I can find it, I might as well build it. About a year ago, a company called Sterling Key sent me a small-scale four-stroke gasoline engine. It's mostly made out of brass and aluminium, but it runs pretty well. It works using 95 gasoline that is sprayed into the engine using a simple carburetor. If you want to know more about carburetors, you should check out Destin's video. To control the strokes, it uses a simple system of valves activated by cams underneath. The engine itself is pretty simple, and to see what I want to see, I just need to replace the cylinder with something transparent. Now, my first idea was glass, but to find a glass tube that is going to fit exactly on that piston is going to be a nightmare. Then I thought about acrylic. It's going to melt eventually, but it might just survive long enough to let me see what I want. But then, as I was researching ways of polishing acrylic, I realized I can polish another material. Resin. And luckily for me, I have a resin 3D printer that can make me an exact replica of that cylinder. The resin that I use is already transparent, but the parts that come out of the printer are not. But for a first test, that should be okay. 3, 2, 1... It worked, my money! So, I got some results, which proves I can use the 3D printed cylinder. But now I need to make that cylinder transparent. And to do that, I'm gonna use some fine sandpaper and a product that is used to polish the acrylics on cars. Look at that. So transparent? I think this is gonna work. Uno. Dos, tres. So, here's a beautiful slow motion shot of the transparent engine working. You're welcome. Now, let's see if we actually have the four strokes we have been seeing in my crappy animation. Dude, this animation took me like five hours to make. It was a lot of work. Sorry, past me. We are here for the real deal. No cartoons. So, we have a power stroke, exhaust, intake, compression, and power. Wait, where's the explosion? Did the engine just skip the most important part of the cycle? 
Oh, I know what's going on. So this footage was taken right after I started the engine. So maybe because of that, the engine is not working perfectly yet. Let's fast forward a bit. Okie dokie, once again we have the power stroke, exhaust, intake, and nothing. What's going on here? This is weird, I can literally see the gasoline being sucked into the cylinder, but then, no explosion. Maybe it's because of the light. Sometimes the plasmin explosions is barely visible. Let's turn the lights off and try again. Power, exhaust, intake, compression, and nothing. Okay, now I'm really lost. I don't know, maybe it's because the mixture is not igniting? Maybe the spark plug is not working. Ah! Oh, it's working. It's working pretty well. Or maybe I don't have enough compression. Talking about compression, why is it that you have to compress the mixture? I mean, can't you just ignite it without compression? Well, apparently a while back this German guy called Odo realized that compressing the mixture increases both the efficiency and the power of the engine, and thus was born the Odo cycle. Which makes sense since compression leads to a bigger pop. Yeah, I guess the problem is the compression. I'm not feeling a lot of compression at all. Maybe I sanded the cylinder too much and now I have too much of a gap around the piston. No problem, I can just 3D print another one. Yeah. And as long as we're testing another cylinder, why not test another fuel? Gasoline is just one of the fuels you can test on the force rookie. Another one is methanol. Methanol is a special kind of alcohol that is not drinkable, but is good as fuel. It has about half of the energy of the gasoline, so we should be expecting weaker explosions and a worse performance. Let's test it. Ready? One, two, three. That was amazing. Is working so well? Theory is a beautiful thing, until it gets shattered by reality. You heard the engine working and that didn't sound less powerful than gasoline. It's also going faster, the gasoline one was going at about 4000 rotations per minute, but with the methanol is reaching nearly 6000. So my theory for this is that even if with the methanol the engine is going faster, it still has less of a punch, less torque. I mean you can see the explosions of the methanol are fainter, and I'm assuming that means less power. And that raises an interesting question, because if the methanol is a weaker fuel than gasoline, which fuel is more powerful than gasoline? Well, I have a word for you. Nitromethane. Nitromethane is a fuel used in drag racing. It's very powerful, because when it burns, it releases oxygen in the form of nitric oxide, which means that while you need about 15 kilograms of air to burn 1 kilogram of gasoline, you only need about 2 kilograms of air to burn 1 kilogram of nitromethane which also means you can burn much more nitromethane. Nonetheless, nitromethane has four times less energy than gasoline, which means that with all of the math worked out, nitromethane is only 2.3 times more powerful than gasoline. Unfortunately, I can't get pure nitromethane, because as it turns out, nitromethane is a more powerful explosive than TNT, which makes it very illegal. What I can get is methanol enriched with nitromethane, and that should be fun to test with anyway. I was able to get methanol enriched with 16% of nitromethane and 25%. Let's give it a test. 3, 2, 1. And it's gone. So, after taking a look at the slow motion footage, I realized the engine was running at 5800 RPM, which is better than gasoline but worse than methanol. And that was weird until I took a closer look. You see, with none of the fuels we tested so far is this engine doing a 4-stroke cycle. It's always keeping power strokes consistently. It's doing one power stroke for each 8 strokes with the gasoline and methanol, and one power stroke for each 12 strokes with the 16% nitromethane. This engine uses magnets placed on the cam's gear to trigger the ignition. Maybe over a certain speed, the time the spark plug is on is just not enough to ignite the fuel. That is my theory, but let's just test the 25% nitromethane to get some more data. Moment of truth. With the 25% nitromethane, the engine is running slower than with both the methanol and the 16% nitromethane at 4500 RPM, but is going at a rate of one power stroke for each four strokes of the engine consistently. This means that this fuel was the only one to actually make a four stroke cycle. The only thing that I can't really understand 
is how is it that the most powerful fuel that I tested was the one that performed the worst in terms of speed? I think that goes over my head, but maybe it doesn't go over yours, so if you have an explanation, please leave it in the comment section, I'll pin it to the top. If you want to replicate this experiment yourself, I'm leaving the link for the engine and for the 3D model of the cylinder in the description of the video. If for some reason you don't have a 3D printer to replicate the cylinder, well, I can help with that. On my last video I gave away a 3D printer to the most liked comment suggesting a theme for a future video. The winner was Logan Friedman. If you also want to win a 3D printer, all you need to do is subscribe to the channel, leave a like on this video and post a comment suggesting a theme for a future video. The most liked comment will receive a brand new 3D printer. Um, well, this is everything for today. Thank you so much for watching and remember, tomatoes are disgusting. See ya! You see that? It burned the, ha the hairs in my hand. Safety third, guys. Jesus Christ!